This is exercise 9, lesson 25, touching the cake. If the enemies get all the way across to the cake, you should place them back at the left side of the screen and decrease the score. To start, you'll write code for only one of your enemies. Okay, so inside the enemies touch cake function, use a condi conditional to detect whether enemy 1 has touched the cake. So conditional, that is an if statement. So let's find the enemies touch cake function. Always read the directions, people. Okay, right there, enemies touch cake. So what do we have to do? Uh, conditional, so that's under control. If um, is touching... All right, so our enemy one, we'll call it. Enemy one is touching cake. Loop the enemy back to the left side of the screen. So guys, can we use the function? Let me think about this. Okay, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to find this code right here, and I think I'm going to, pretty sure I'm just going to copy these three lines of code and put them in the function. And the only thing I'm going to add is this. Use the counter pattern to decrease the score by two. I think that's the only thing. Yeah, I think that's the only thing we need to add. <clears throat> so enemies touch cake. So let me, hopefully my cursor is, okay. Uh, okay, there we go. So I'm going to paste that in there. And how do we decrease the score by two? Well, we go into variables and we're going to say score equals score minus two. Score equals score minus two. And the only way this is going to work is if we have a score variable at the top. So let's make sure that they created a score variable. Yes, they did. Variable score equals zero. So now if it touches the cake, the score should go down by two. So it should go down by four because, oh wait, no, no, yeah, two. Because we didn't only, we only put the code in for one of the ladybugs, okay? So let's see, maybe exercise 10 is the second ladybug. Okay, so I'm, yeah, look, they're even telling us to copy and paste. So let's, let's go down to the enemy touch cake function and yeah we're just changing all the enemy one code to enemy two so make sure your cursor is inside the function and we're just changing the one to a two all right And now let's reset it and run it and see if this works. I only see one ladybug. Let's make sure that's not a problem. Okay, so something is not right here. So x equals 0, velocity x. Hmm. Okay, there we go. All right, I didn't see. All right. So yeah, now we're all good. So let's move on to the next exercise. Creating functions. Your program now includes code in two places to set the enemies on the left side of the screen at a random Y location. So that's what I was talking about. We just copied the code from up here and put it inside our function. You can create functions to reset each of your two enemies to remove repetitions from your program. This will make your program easier to read allow you to change it more easily, and allow you to quickly reset your sprites at other points in your program if you need to. Okay, so we're going to find this code that I just copied and pasted into the function, and we're going to turn it into this set enemy one function. So let's go ahead and... Did they already create those? Yeah, they did. Oh, wait, no, we, we need to create these functions. Okay. So let's go to functions and we're going to drag two of these down here. 
and we're going to name the first one set enemy one and the second one set enemy two whoops set enemy one set enemy two okay so now the, the functions have been created okay so now we're finding this code and we're just going to paste it in there copy and paste it in there so that's at the top right here so we have this and now uh, whoops okay cool so this is that and now let's find the code for enemy 2 and now we go all the way down to the bottom again and I'm going to click that so my cursor comes in okay so now they're saying wherever you just took that code from replace it with a call to these functions so um, the first thing that I want to do is I want to go to the draw loop where we just did that which is right here um, so this is enemy one and two okay so I'm going to delete this code and instead I'm going to have set enemy one And copy this and move it down here. Set enemy two. And I gotta delete this code. So look how neat that is, look how organized it is. Now we gotta do it up here. Whoops. And this needs to be set enemy one. Oh perfect, it already is. set enemy two here and now this should this should work let's see now our code is a little more organized than it was before so hopefully this score works boom okay it worked excellent so let's move on it's time to write code for some more sprite interactions your player sprite should displace the enemy sprites for this level, you'll be writing code inside the displace enemies function. So let's find that. Um, displace enemies. Okay, it's right here. Line 69. Write code that makes player displace both enemy sprites. Okay. Uh, test your program to make sure your player is displacing enemies, but keep moving right after the player moves away. Okay. Displace enemies, so I would think that it's just... I think I'm just using the displace button, or block. All right, let's see. All right, displace, perfect. Let's get two of those in there. Uh, player displace. Enemy one. Player displace. Enemy two. All right. And is it in the here? Let's see the instructions. Write code, test your program. Okay. As long as it's called in the draw loop, displace enemies, it is. Then this should work. Okay, cool. Yeah, and it keeps moving after the player moves away, so we're good here. Exercise 13, the last part of the game that you will need to write is the code to reset the sprites when they touch the water. Okay, Re they, okay, yeah, right. The, we already wrote functions that reset each sprite, so you'll just need a new way, a good way to know when their either sprite leaves the bridge. Start by writing code for a single enemy, then copy and paste and make small changes. So they're saying when we push 
a, a bug into the water, it needs to reset. For this level, you'll be writing code inside the enemies touch water function. Okay, so let's find that. Enemies touch water right there, line 74. Use an if statement to check whether enemy one is off the top of the screen or off the top of the bridge by checking whether its Y value is below 140. So look, Y value right here is about 140. Within your if statement, use your set enemy one function to reset the sprite. That's brilliant. That is absolutely brilliant. So we need a, a less than operator, which is right here. If and let's just type it in um, enemy one dot y yeah I was about to put dot x because we're checking its y value if it's less than 140 then we're going to call the function set enemy one I think that's what is that what it's called set enemy one set enemy one um, and we're gonna add one to the score so how do we do that we go into variables score equals score plus one score equals score plus one okay and now all we're doing use your set enemy one function to oh, okay now we have to okay so we're going to do the same thing um but we're going to change this operator from a uh, less than to a greater than and we're going to change the y value to 260. so find that on your keyboard find the greater than and this should be good and we're going to copy and paste the code you wrote to create the same behavior for enemy two okay so let's do that you'll need to change the name of the sprite and the name of the functions you use that is a great point so put your cursor right here and oh whoops and yeah this is smooth sailing from here and now we should have a fully functional game everybody so let's push these boom I got a point got another point got another point so we're good to go let's see if uh, there are any challenges okay I don't have time to go through all these in um, in the video but I do want you to complete all of these the high score background we did this in lesson 24 so go back to lesson 24 if you need to and find the exercise that has us do something where the background changes when you reach a certain score Randomize enemy speed. That should be very easy. You just need a random number block inside your X velocity uh, for enemy one and enemy two. Changing the visuals, um, yeah, please, please try and do that just to customize it and make it your own. See, they made a bunny, and instead of a cake, they made a carrot. End uh, the game. This is a tough one, and I like this very much, and I want you to try this on your own.